आईजीसीएसई फिजिक्स पेपर टू वेरिएंट वन मे जून 2022 क्वेश्चन वन विच मेजिंग डिवाइसेस आर मोस्ट सुइटेबल फॉर डिटरमाइनिंग द लेंथ ऑफ अ स्विमिंग पूल एंड द थिकनेस ऑफ एल्यूमिनियम फॉइल टू फाइंड आउट लेंथ ऑफ अ स्विमिंग पूल इन ऑप्शन ए इट इज गिवन रूलर इन बी एंड सी इट इज गिवन टेप मेजर वेयर एज इन डी अगेन इट इज गिवन रूलर टू फाइंड आउट लेंथ ऑफ अ स्विमिंग पूल इधर वी कैन यूज रूलर और टेप मेजर but tape measure is a better option so possible option will be b and c now to find out thickness of aluminum foil in b it is given micrometer screw gauge and in c it is given ruler in ruler the minimum thickness that we can calculate accurately is of 1 mm whereas thickness of aluminum foil is less than 1 mm so we cannot find out the thickness of aluminum foil with the help of a ruler we have to use micrometer screw gauge so correct option will be option b to find out length of a swimming pool we will use tape measure and to find out thickness of aluminum foil we will use micrometer screw gauge question 2 a man stands next to a railway track a train traveling at 40 meter per second takes 2 second to pass the man what is the length of the train Length of the train means here we have to find out the total distance covered by the train. To find out total distance covered by the train, we will use the formula distance is equal to velocity into time. Now velocity is given 40 meter per second, whereas time is given 2 second. So just by solving this one, we will get the answer 80 meters, and 80 meters is given in d. So correct option option d. Question number three: A speed time graph is used to describe the motion of an object. Which quantities are calculated from the gradient of the graph and from the area under the graph? If we plot a graph in between speed and time, we will get a gradient, and this gradient represents acceleration. So, gradient of the graph represents acceleration. So, possible option will be A and B. Now, what about the area under the graph? area under the graph area under the line area under this gradient it is called distance travel or distance covered so it is clear that our correct option will be option a the gradient represent acceleration whereas the area under the graph it represent distance travel so correct option will be option a Question number four: On the moon, all objects fall with the same acceleration. Which statement explain this? Option A: On the moon, all objects have the same weight. No, it is incorrect. Weight is directly proportional to mass. So, with the increase in mass, weight will be increased. With the decrease in mass, weight will be decreased. Or we can say that weight is directly proportional to the mass of the object. So option A is incorrect. Option B the moon has a smaller gravitational field strength than the earth. Yes it is correct gravitational field strength on moon is less than that of on earth but it is not related to our question. So this one will not be our correct option. Okay first we will check the other options also. In C it is given the weight of an object is directly proportional to its mass. Yes it is absolutely correct because here we have noticed that weight is directly proportional to mass so correct option will be option C Question number 5 a measuring cylinder contains 30 cm cube of a liquid some more of the liquid is added until the liquid level reaches to 50 cm cube mark the reading on the balance increases by 30 g what is the density of the liquid here we have added some liquid and by adding the liquid the new volume we got 50 cm cube so the increase in the volume will be 50 minus 30 it will be 20 cm cube now to find out the density we will use the formula density is equal to mass over volume now here increment in the mass is 30 g where as increment in the volume is 20 so density will be equal to 30 over 20 it will be 1.5 g per cm cube and 1.5 g per cm cube is given in option c so correct option option c 
क्वेश्चन नंबर सिक्स एन ऑब्जेक्ट ऑन द एंड ऑफ अ स्ट्रिंग मूव्स इन अ क्लॉकवाइज सर्कुलर पाथ एट कांस्टेंट स्पीड द डायग्राम शोस द ऑब्जेक्ट एज व्यू फ्रॉम द अबव व्हाट इज द डायरेक्शन ऑफ द रिजल्टेंट फोर्स ऑन द ऑब्जेक्ट व्हेन इट इज इन द पोजीशन शोन हियर वी हैव एन ऑब्जेक्ट दिस ऑब्जेक्ट इज मूविंग इन अ सर्कुलर पाथ एंड व्हेन एन ऑब्जेक्ट इज मूविंग इन अ सर्कुलर पाथ इट इज एक्टेड अपॉन बाय अ फोर्स एंड दिस फोर्स इज डायरेक्टेड टुवर्ड द सेंटर ऑफ द सर्कल and towards the center of the circle the force is represented by alphabet a so correct option will be option a question number 7 a beam is pivoted at one end as shown the beam weighs 6 newton and its weight x at a point x 40 cm from the pivot a force of 4 newton is applied to the beam causing it to balance horizontally In which direction and where is the force Newton force applied? To find out the direction and the point of action of the force, we have to use the formula clockwise moment is equal to anti-clockwise moment. Now, what is moment? Moment is product of force and moment arm. Now, because of this force, six Newton force, the moment will be in clockwise direction, and this clockwise moment will be equal to six. multiply by the distance from this point to the pivot that is 40 cm so clockwise moment will be equal to 6 multiply by 40 now because of this 4 newton force what is the distance from the pivot first we have to calculate this distance so anti clockwise moment will be equal to this force 4 newton multiply by the distance x Now by solving this one we got the value of x that is 60 cm. So here we can say to keep this beam in horizontal position we have to apply a force at a distance of 60 cm from the pivot. 60 cm from the pivot or in other words we can say we have to apply a force at a distance of 20 cm from this 6 newton force. Of this applied force should be in upper direction because when we apply a force in upper direction it will produce an anti clockwise moment so here we can say we have to apply a force at a distance of 20 cm to the right of 6 newton force in the upper direction now if we check the options in option a it is given vertically downward in b again it is given vertically downward so these two are not the possible option In C, it is given vertically upward at a distance 20 cm to the left of x. We have noticed here that we have to apply the force at a distance of 20 cm to the right of this force. So C is also incorrect. Correct option option D, vertically upward at 20 cm to the right of x. So correct option is option D. Question number eight on the diagram shown. What is the magnitude of the resultant force of these two vector? To find out the resultant force, to find out the resultant vector, we have to draw a line that should be parallel and equal to this eight newton force from the head of this six newton force or this six newton vector. Now we will draw a line from the head of this eight newton vector that should be parallel and equal to this six newton vector. Now, just by measuring the length of this vector in blue color with the help of a ruler, we will get the resultant force. We will get the resultant vector. Or alternatively, we can use the formula R is equal to R x square plus R y square, where R x is the component vector along x axis that is eight newton, and R y is the vector six newton. So just by substituting the value of R x and R y, we will get the answer, and the answer is 10 newton, and 10 newton is given in option C. So correct option will be option C. Question number nine: Three situations are listed. An object has a resultant force acting on it. Number two: A moving object experiences an impulse. Number three: An object is decelerating. in which situation is the momentum of the object changing first we check what is momentum momentum is given as product of mass and velocity or we can say rate of change of momentum is equal to force 
Also, we can say impulse is given as force multiplied by time and force multiplied by time is equal to momentum. Now, here in 1, it is given an object has a resultant force. Here we have noticed resultant force is equal to rate of change of momentum. So, 1 is correct. Number 2, a moving object experiences an impulse. Here in point 3, we have noticed that impulse is equal to force into time and that is equal to momentum. So, 2 is also correct. Number 3, an object is decelerating. Whether the object is decelerating or accelerating, there will be a change in momentum. So, number 3 is also involved. So, here number 1, number 2 and number 3, all the points are correct. So, correct option will be option D where 1, 2 and 3 are given. So, correct option, option D. Question number 10. A ball of mass 0.16 kg is moving forward at a speed of 0.5 m per second. A second ball of mass 0.1 kg is stationary. Here we have two ball. One ball 0.16 kg, second ball 0.1 kg. This ball 0.16 kg is moving with a speed of 0.5 m per second towards this 0.1 kg ball. And at that time, this 0.1 kg ball is stationary means its velocity is zero. The first ball strikes the second ball. This first ball strikes the second ball. The second ball moves forward at a speed of 0.5 meter per second. When it strikes the second ball start moving with a speed of 0.5 meter per second. And at that time we have to find out the velocity of this 0.16 kilogram ball. Or in other words, we can say we have to find out the velocity of this 0.16 kg ball after collision. Now to find out the value of this velocity, we will use the formula momentum before collision is equal to momentum after collision. What is momentum? Momentum is given as product of mass and velocity. Now here momentum before collision because of this ball 0.16 kg will be equal to 0.16 multiply by 0.5 and momentum before collision because of this ball 0.1 kg will be equal to 0.1 multiply by 0. Now after the collision we have to find out this velocity. So after the collision momentum because of this 0.16 kg ball will be equal to 0.5 multiply by this velocity that we have to find out and this velocity is represented by alphabet X. Momentum after collision because of this ball 0.1 kg will be equal to 0.1 multiplied by 0.5 and by solving this one we will get the value x is equal to 0.1875. Now if we check the options in the option b 0.19 meter per second is closed value so here our correct option will be option b. Question number 11. A mass hang vertically from a spring. The mass is raised to a point P and then released. The mass oscillates repeatedly between point P and lower point Q, which energies alternatively increase and decrease throughout the oscillation. In first sentence, it is given a mass hang vertically from a spring. Since here we have a spring, so definitely here we will have elastic energy. The mass is raised. Mass is raised means its position is changed and the energy because of the position is called gravitational potential energy. So here gravitational potential energy is involved. In third sentence it is given the mass oscillate. Oscillates means mass is moving and the energy by virtue of its motion is called kinetic energy. So here we will have elastic energy, gravitational potential energy and kinetic energy. And all these three energies are given in option A. Gravitational potential, kinetic and elastic. So definitely correct option will be option A. Question number 12. A car has 620 kilojoule of kinetic energy. The car brakes and stops in a distance of 91 meter. What is the average braking force acting on the car? 
To find out the breaking force, we will use the formula work done is equal to force into displacement. Here the energy, kinetic energy, it is the amount of work done. But this kinetic energy or amount of work done is given in kilojoule. So in joule, it will be equal to 620 multiplied by 1000. Force we have to calculate, displacement is 91 meter. So just by solving, we will get the value 6813. Now if we check the option, here the close value is 6800 Newton that is given in option C. So our correct option will be option C. Question number 13, the diagram shows a deep reservoir formed by a dam on what does the pressure at X depend? Option A, the depth of water at X. B, the length of the reservoir. C, the surface area of the water. D, the thickness of the dam wall. We have studied that the pressure exerted by a liquid is given as P is equal to rho GH. Where P for pressure, rho for density, G for gravitational field strength and D and H for depth. H for depth, this H is the distance from the surface of the liquid to the point where we have to find out the pressure. So this depth is represented by alphabet H. Now here if we check the options again, in option A it is given the depth of the water at X. So definitely this will be our correct option. Pressure depends on depth or we can say height of the water, height of the liquid from the surface to the point where we have to find out the pressure. So correct option is option A. Question number 14. A sealed rigid container has a fixed volume. The container is filled with air. The container is placed in a freezer cabinet and the temperature of the air in the container decreases. Which row correctly describes what happens to the air in the container? In option A, it is given average distance between air particle. In first sentence, it is given it has a fixed volume. When it has a fixed volume, there will be no change in the distance in between the air particle. So distance in between the air particle will remain same. There will be no change. And no change is given in C and D, so possible option will be C and D. Now in the second column, it is given average speed of the air particle. Here it is given, it is kept in a freezer cabinet. Freezer cabinet means temperature is decreasing. When temperature decreases, kinetic energy of the molecule will also be decreased. And with the decrease in kinetic energy, the average speed average velocity of the air particle will also be decreased because average speed depends on kinetic energy and kinetic energy depends on temperature. So with the decrease in temperature, kinetic energy will be decreased and with the decrease in kinetic energy, average speed of the air particle will also be decreased. Now decreases is given in option D. So our correct option will be option D. Average distance will have no change because it has fixed volume and average speed will be decreased because with the decrease in temperature, kinetic energy will be decreased and with the decrease in kinetic energy, the speed of the air particle will be decreased. So correct option is D. Question number 15. Two open containers are filled with water at room temperature. The containers have different shapes. From which container does the water evaporate at the greater rate and how can the rate of the evaporation be increased? In first column, it is given container with the greater rate of evaporation. It is container 1, it is container 2. We have studied that the factors that affect of evaporation, the first factor is surface area. With the increase in surface area, evaporation increases. Since here surface area in container 1 is more as compared to container 2, so definitely here in container 1 evaporation will be more. Now greater rate of evaporation will be in 1 and 1 is given in A and B, so possible option will be A and B. Now second condition we have studied that with the increase in temperature, 
evaporation increases. So in the second column, how the rate of evaporation can be increased? By increasing the water temperature that is given in option B. So for sure, our correct option will be option B. Greater rate of evaporation will be in container 1 and this evaporation can be further increased by increasing the temperature of water in this container 1. So correct option is option B. Question number 16. The diagram shows a liquid and glass thermometer. A student wishes to check the marking of the upper fixed point on this thermometer. What should she do? To find out the marking of the upper fixed point, we have to keep this thermometer in pure boiling water. And to find out the lower fixed point, we have to keep this thermometer in melting ice. So when we will keep this one in melting ice, we will get the lower value. And when we will keep this one in boiling pure water, we will get the upper fixed point, upper fixed value. And in Celsius, this uh, point, this lower point is 0 degree centigrade and this uh, point in the boiling water or upper point it is 100 degree centigrade. So here we can say that if we have to find out the upper fixed point, we have to keep this thermometer in pure boiling water. Now if we check the options, in option A it is given put the bulb in a beaker of boiling sea water. No, it is incorrect. B. Put the bulb in a beaker of boiling pure water. Yes, it is correct. We have to keep the thermometer in pure boiling water to find out the upper fixed point. So, correct option will be option B. Question number 17. Water in a beaker gains thermal energy at a rate of 3000 watt. The water is at its boiling point. The specific latent heat of vaporization of water is 2260 joule per gram. How long does it take for 250 gram of the water to vaporize? First we will use the formula Q is equal to M into L where Q amount of heat, M for mass and this L is for latent heat of vaporization. Here we have to find out time but in this formula we haven't time. So from where we will get the time? To get the time, we will use the formula P is equal to Q over T and from this relation we can say Q is equal to P into T. So in place of Q, we can write P T. So that this equation will become P T is equal to M into L. Now here this P is power here it is given thermal energy at a rate of 3000 watt. So this 3000 watt is power or we can say rate of thermal energy. So value of P, value of rate of thermal energy is 3000. This time we have to calculate mass is given here 250 gram and here this uh, latent heat of vaporization is 2260. So just by solving we can get the answer time is equal to 188 second. And 188 second is given in B, so correct option is option B. Question number 18. A glass contains an ice string on a warm and humid day. Water starts to form on the outside of the glass. What is the name of the effect by which the water forms? Outside this ice string, we have water vapors. When these water vapors strike with the outer wall of this glass, it will transfer their energy to this glass and they will be cooled down as a droplet. And this effect, this phenomena, this process is called condensation. So here what is the name of the effect? Name is condensation that is given in option A. So correct option is option A. Question number 19. One end of a copper bar is heated to a high temperature. Which mechanism is responsible for the transfer of thermal energy to the other end of the copper bar? Copper bar means it is metal. In metal, we have free electrons and these free electrons can move from one place to another place. Second thing, copper bar is solid. In solid, 
we have atoms or molecules and these atoms or molecule vibrate at their mean position. So here energy can be transferred because of the vibration of these atoms or these molecules and also because of the movement of the free electron from one point to another point. Now if we check the options in option A, the lattice vibration of copper ions only, no it is incorrect. Here we have noticed that energy can be transferred not only because of the vibration of these ions or these atoms or these molecules but also because of the movement of the electron. So option A is incorrect. B the lattice vibration of the copper ions and the movement of high energy electron along the bar. Yes it is correct. Heat energy can be transferred because of the vibration of these ions or because of these atoms and also because of the flow of electron from one point to another point. So definitely our correct option will be option B. Here energy is transferred because of the vibration of the copper ions as well as because of the movement of high energy electrons along the bar. Question number 20. The diagram shows a convection current caused by a piece of ice placed in a beaker of water at room temperature. Which row correctly compares the temperature and densities at water points P and Q? It is point P, it is point Q. First we check the density at point P. Point P is in the bottom, whereas Q is close to the surface. So definitely density will be more at point P because more denser object remains in the bottom. So at point P density will be more as compared to Q. Now density is higher than at Q is given in A and C so possible option will be A and C. Now what about the temperature? With the increase in temperature volume increases and with the increase in volume density will be decreased because density is given as mass over volume. Since at point P density is higher so definitely here temperature should be less to keep the volume at a lesser value. So at point P density will be higher than at Q and temperature at point P should be lower than at Q and it is given in option C so correct option will be option C. Question number 21 the diagram shows a wave which row is correct. Here in the first column amplitude is given. What is amplitude? Amplitude is vertical distance from the mean position to the peak position. Here from mean to peak this distance is given 1. 1 is given in A and B so possible option will be A and B. In second column it is given wavelength. What is wavelength? Wavelength is the distance in between two consecutive crests or in between two consecutive trough or the distance in between one crest and one trough. So here wavelength will be the distance starting from the zero to this point or we can say all the distance in between these two consecutive crests or the distance in between two consecutive trough. And this distance is a 8 centimeter. So our correct option will be option B. Wavelength is 8 centimeter and amplitude is 1 centimeter. So correct option will be option B. Question number 22. A sound wave is created by a loudspeaker that vibrates backward and forwards 96,000 times per minute. The speed of sound is 320 meter per second. What is the wavelength of the sound wave? To find out wavelength of a sound wave, we will use the formula velocity is equal to frequency into wavelength. So wavelength will be equal to velocity over frequency. Now here velocity is 320 meters per second. What is frequency? Here frequency is given 96,000 per minute. But this frequency we have to convert in seconds. So to convert in second, we have to divide this 96,000 by 60 and we will get 1600 cycles per second. Now we have frequency 1600 cycle per second, velocity 320 meter per second. So just by substituting and by solving, we will get the answer 0.2 meters. So wavelength is 0.20 meter and 0.20 meter is given in option A. 
सो करेक्ट ऑप्शन विल बी ऑप्शन ए क्वेश्चन नंबर ट्वेंटी थ्री अ कार्ड इज प्लेस इन फ्रंट ऑफ अ प्लेन मिरर सो दैट इट्स लेबल इज फेसिंग द मिरर एज शोन हाउ डज द इमेज ऑफ द लेबल फॉर्म बाय द मिरर एपेयर टू द ऑब्जर्वर here we are looking at image of this object where some alphabet is written c and i in a plane mirror the image form is virtual and it is laterally inverted means right become left left become right so here this alphabet that is on the left it will go to the right and this i it will go to the left so if we check the option correct option should be option c here this c is on the left so in the image it will go to the right and this i it is on the right side so it will go to the left so correct option will be option c question number 24 a thin converging lens can produce both real and virtual images which row describe a real and a virtual image option A for the real image, it is given rays converge to form the image. Yes, it is correct. When the rays converge, it forms real image. When the rays diverge, they form virtual image. So converge is given in A and B. So possible option will be A and B. For the virtual image in A, it is given image can be projected on a screen. No, it is incorrect. real image can be projected on a screen so a is incorrect so definitely b should be correct where it is given for the virtual image that image can not be projected on a screen so correct option is option b question number 5 the speed of light in air is 3 into 10 power 8 meter per second the critical angle for light in a transparent plastic material place in air is 37 degree what is the speed of light in the plastic material the formula that we are going to use here it is sin c is equal to velocity of light in plastic divided by velocity of light in air now here just we have to substitute the values here angle is given 37 so it will become sin 37 velocity of light in plastic we have to find out velocity of light in air it is given 3 into 8 3 into 10 power 8 meter per second so just by solving we will get the answer 1.8 into 10 power 8 meter per second and it is it is given in option a so correct option option a question number 26 which part of the electromagnetic spectrum is used by a remote controller for a television in the topic of electromagnetic spectrum we have studied that infrared rays are used for the remote controller of a television so infrared wave is given in option a so correct option option a question number 27 which statement correctly compares radio wave and x rays option a radio wave have a longer wavelength and a greater speed in a vacuum here first part is correct but second part is incorrect this radio wave and x rays both are electromagnetic waves and for electromagnetic wave the speed in vacuum and air it is same and that is equal to velocity of light that is 3 into 10 power 8 meter per second so here this option a is incorrect in b it is given radio waves have a longer wavelength and the same speed in a vacuum yes both x rays and radio wave will have the same speed in vacuum and also here we have observed the radio waves have a longer wavelength these are radio waves these are x rays in radio waves the distance in between the wave is more as compared to x rays so in radio waves they have longer wavelength as compared to x rays and both will have the same speed in vacuum that is equal to 3 into 10 power 8 meter per second so correct option will be option b radio waves have a longer wavelength and at and the same speed in a vacuum so correct option is b 
क्वेश्चन नंबर ट्वेंटी एट स्टूडेंट काउंट हाउ मेनी आर एन पिन एन इलेक्ट्रो मैग्नेट पिक्स अप वेन इट्स पावर सप्लाई इज स्विच ऑन देन शी काउंट हाउ मेनी पिन आर पिक अप वेन द पावर सप्लाई इज स्विच ऑफ शी रिपीट द एक्सपेरिमेंट यूजिंग कोर्स मेड ऑफ डिफरेंट मटीरियल द रिजल्ट आर शोन विच कोर इज मेड आउट ऑफ सॉफ्ट आयरन सॉफ्ट आयरन इज टेम्परेरी मैगनेट means when electricity is supplied it will become it will behave as a magnet and it will attract the nails but once this power supply is cut off this soft iron core will no more be a electromagnet it will not behave as a magnet and it will not attract the pins so when it is powered on it will attract the pins and when the power is off there will be no attraction for the pins towards this soft iron so here our correct option should be option d because here it is given pins picked up with the power supply on when the power supply is on it will behave as a electromagnet and it will attract the pin and here in the second column it is given pins picked up with the power supply off when the power supply will be off it will no more behave as a electromagnet so it will not attract the pins so pins will be zero so correct option is option d with power on it will attract 12 pin with power off it will attract zero pin question number 29 a plastic rod is brought near to a small plastic sphere suspended from a stand the sphere is repelled by the rod why is this option a the rod and the sphere have like charges yes definitely this one is correct because when they have the like charges they will repel each other when they will have unlike charges they will attract since here it is given the plastic rod is brought near to a small plastic sphere suspended from a stand the sphere is repelled a sphere is repelled means both have same charges both have like charges that's why it is repelled so correct option is a question number 30 which unit is equivalent to volt what is volt volt is unit of voltage and voltage is defined as amount of work done to carry unit positive charge or mathematically we can say voltage is equal to work done over charge now unit of voltage is v so 1 volt or v will be equal to unit of work done that is joule divide by unit of charge that is coulomb and joule per coulomb is given in option b so correct option option b question number 31 a resistor converts 360 joule of energy when there is a current of 3 ampere in it the potential difference across the resistor is 6 volt for how long is there this current in the resistor Here we have to find out the time. To find out the time, we will use the formula E is equal to V R T, where E for electrical energy, V for voltage, I for current, and T for time. Now here electrical energy is given 360 joule, current is given 3 ampere, voltage is given 6 volt. So just by substituting the values, we will get the time that is 20 second. And 20 second is given in B, so correct option is B. Question number 32. The four circuits shown each contain four diodes. In which circuit is the direction of the current in the resistor always from the red terminal to black terminal? It is red terminal. It is black terminal. Current starts from the battery. When the current reaches this node, either it can go on this side or on this side. but here we have a reverse bias diode here we have forward bias diode so current will flow which in which direction toward this direction because this diode will stop the current now when this current will reach at this node it has two path either it can flow on this path or it can flow on this path then again we have a reverse bias diode that will stop the current in this path so current will move toward the red terminal and now this current always flow from this red terminal to black terminal so definitely our correct option will be option a but we also check the other options 
in option b we are looking when the current will reach at this node now here we have a forward bias diode so current will flow in this direction not in this direction so this current will not flow toward the red terminal here when the current will reach at this node here it is forward bias so it can move from from this point to this point but when it will reach at this node here again we have a diode that is a forward bias so either current can flow on this path or it can flow on this path we cannot say accurately whether the current will flow through this diode or through this red terminal so that's why this option c is incorrect in d again when the current will reach at this node this current will move toward this path because here we have a forward bias diode and here we have a reverse bias diode so this current will not flow from red to black terminal so this option d is also incorrect so correct option is option a where current always flow from red to black terminal question number 33 the diagram shows a circuit of six identical lamps connected to a battery which lamp are brightest here we have only one lamp here two lamp here three lamp here the current is divided into three parts here two parts here whatever be the current all the current is passing through this p so definitely this p will be the brightest and p only is given in a so correct option will be definitely option a question number 34 a data circuit is made of two logic gates which row is correct for this data circuit here we have a or gate here we have a not gate in or gate if both the inputs are zero result will be zero if either of the input is 1 then output will be 1 now we check the options here the first input w it is 0 x it is 0 so why output it cannot be 1 it will be 0 so option a is impossible in b this one is 0 this one is 1 then again in y this output it is written 0 it is also incorrect it cannot be it should be 1 so b is also incorrect in c it is given w is 1 this input is 1 this input is 0 and here this output is written here 1 yes it may be correct because either of the input is 1 then output will be 1 so this option may be correct what about z here it is not gate not gate means if here it is 1 then here it should be 0 what we are looking in c that output of this or gate is 1 and then output of z means after not gate it is written 0 and here we have observed if input of this not gate is 1 then the output of this not gate will be 0 so sure shot our correct option will be option c where we have observed that one input is 1 second input is 0 so output of this or gate will be 1 now this output of this or gate will serve it will behave as input for this not gate so output of the not gate will be 0 so correct option will be option c question number 35 a magnet is dropped vertically through a solenoid this induces magnetic poles at both ends of the solenoid here we have a solenoid this say uh, magnet bar is moving toward the solenoid and here we are taking this magnet bar away from the solenoid which magnetic poles are induced at position x in diagram 1 and diagram 3 this topic is related to lenz law Lenz law states an induced current always flows in a direction such that it opposes the change that produces it. When this magnet bar is moving toward the solenoid, there is a flow of electrical current. There will be an induced EMF. Now, this induced EMF will oppose this change. To oppose this change on this side of this solenoid, same pole should be developed. so that magnetic lines of force should repel each other to, to oppose each other so here we can say that south pole will be developed on this side and north pole will be developed on this side 
Same as shown here, when the magnet bar is moving towards the solenoid on this end of the solenoid, same pole is developed whatever be the pole on the magnet bar on this side. Means here, same pole will be developed when we are moving the magnet bar towards the solenoid. When we are moving the bar away from the solenoid, then opposite pole will be developed. If here we have north pole, here south pole will be developed. Now here in diagram 3, we are moving the magnet bar away from the solenoid. So here on this end, what pole should develop? Opposite to this north pole. Opposite to this north pole means here it should be south. So here on X, it will be north. So here south, here north. So in diagram 1, we have observed at X, it will be south pole. In diagram 1, it will be south pole. That is uh, given in C and D. Now in diagram 3, at this end, it will be north pole. And north pole is given in C. So correct option will be option C. In diagram 1, at point X, in diagram 1, south pole will be developed. And in diagram 3, at X, north pole will be developed. So correct option should be option C. Question number 36. Which transformer can change a 240 volt AC input into a 15 volt AC output? In the topic of transformer, we have studied that voltage and number of turns are directly proportional to each other or we can say Vp over Vs is equal to Np over Ns, where Vp is voltage on the primary side and Vs on the secondary side. This Np number of turns on the primary side, this Ns number of turns on the secondary side. Now here first we will calculate Vp over Vs. Here Vp is 240, Vs is 15 and the result the answer is 16. So the ratio of Vp over Vs is 16. Now in all these four cases we will calculate value of Np over Ns. We will calculate the ratio Np over Ns and we have to check where we will get Np over Ns the same value as we got here for Vp over Vs that is 16. Now in option A, number of turns is 800 on the primary side and 40 on the secondary side. If we will calculate this one, we will get the answer 20. It is not the same value as the ratio of Vp over Vs. So A is not the possible option. In B, it is 1000 over 25. Again, it is 40. So it is also incorrect. In C, it is 2400 over 50. It is 160. It is also incorrect. So definitely our correct option will be option D where we will divide 1200 by 75 it is 16 and it is the same ratio as Vp over Vs that is we have calculated in the uh, in this case. So here Vp over Vs is equal to 16 and Np over Ns in option D is also 16. So here our correct option will be option D. In D we will get 15 volt AC from 240 volt AC input. Question number 37. What is the purpose of a split ring commutator in an electric motor? In an electric motor, we use a split ring commutator to keep the current in one direction. Now if we check the options, option A to ensure the magnetic field in the motor changes direction every half rotation. No, actually we have to keep the current in the same direction when the coil in the motor is turning. Here is a turning effect. But in A, it is given magnetic field. That's why option A is uh, incorrect. In B, again, it is given magnetic field. So definitely this will also be incorrect. In C, it is given to ensure the turning effect on the motor changes direction. No, we have to keep the split ring to keep the current in the same direction. So C is incorrect. D is correct where it is given to ensure the turning effect of the motor stays in the same direction at all the times. Question number 38. How do the sizes of two nuclei produced in a nuclear fission reaction compare to the size of the original nucleus? During fission, one nucleus is divided into two or more than two nuclei. So definitely when it will be divided in two or more than two nuclei, 
the size of the nuclei will be less than the size of the parent nucleus. Now if we check the options, in option A it is given both larger than the original nucleus. No, it is incorrect. Both will be smaller than the original nucleus. So A is incorrect. B one larger and one smaller. This one is also incorrect. Both smaller than the original nucleus. Yes, it is correct. Here we have an example when uranium is bombarded by a neutron, it is splitted into two smaller nuclei, krypton and barium, and along with krypton and barium, three neutrons are also formed. And along with this, a tremendous amount of energy is produced. So correct option is option C, both smaller than the original nucleus. Question number 39, which statement about the radioactive decay of a substance is correct? Option A, it cannot be predicted when a particular nucleus will decay. Yes, it is correct. Radioactivity is a spontaneous process, so it cannot be predicted. So correct option is option A, it cannot be predicted. Question number 40. The diagram shows the stream of beta particles traveling in a line that passes between the poles of a magnet. In which direction will the beta particle be deflected by the magnet? Here we have a magnet. It is north pole, it is south pole and beta particles are passing through this magnet. It is asked in which direction it will be deflected. In which direction it will be deflected means we have to find out the direction of the resultant force. To find out direction of the resultant force, we can take help of Fleming left hand rule. In Fleming left hand rule, this first finger it represents direction of the magnetic field. Direction of the magnetic field means magnetic lines of force from north towards south. From north towards south means in our case, the direction of the magnetic field will be from top towards the bottom. This middle finger, it represents direction of the flow of electrical current because of positive charges, because of conventional current. And this thumb represents direction of the resultant force. Here we have beta particle. Beta particle means negatively charged particle. So for the negatively charged particle, the direction of this middle finger will be in the opposite direction. Now with the help of this Fleming left hand rule, when we will check the direction of the resultant force, it will be out of the page. It will be toward us. It will be, it seems to be coming from the page towards us. So correct option should be option D. It should be out of the page. Okay, now we have completed all the questions from this paper. Thank you very much.